Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Up top. We were up top when I went to bed. We were fighting with uh, co-founded, I believe, yeah, before we went to bed. And we just decided to, to do some crazy shit. We actually got up over well over 30 cents last night in my sleep. Um, but, of course, like any coin that rises up that fast, people will take profit. Um, that's the thing. I, I always find it amusing because I... I, I completely understand, like, people who are going to take profit are people who aren't heavily invested, right? Those are people who might have, you know, 10, 20, 30, 100,000 coins max, right? And uh, they're just trying to make a clip flip because it's not, like, life-changing if it goes to a dollar to them because they have such a small amount. And they're just trying to flip and flip and flip. And I can understand that. But when people ask me, right, um, it's kind of like, I don't know, I'm like, it's like, I have so many coin that I don't... For me to to chop off a little bit of my chunk to sell it could hurt the market. So what, if I have all of these coins, why would I want to sell any of them and, and hurt the price? Because every coin I sell is going to hurt my price for the rest of my coins. And it would have to take it would take me months and months and months of selling every day to get all my coins out. So it doesn't make any sense. Like and plus I've done so much work. Like I don't know, man. People people don't put enough a, a big enough emphasis on self-work like you know how many hours i've put on a no limit coin you know how much how many hours and work and just working went into no limit coin like but obviously when you're talking about where we were when we were so far from a penny to start you know when you look at a dollar you're like wow right because when we reached a penny the penny was the first unofficial goal before that was when we were so underwater we couldn't even see the sun we couldn't even see the surface and then the penny was like poking our little heads out of the water so we could actually breathe. And people are like, okay, it's officially a penny coin, right? And, um, you know, to get to a dollar, that's a, that's a big way. It's another 100x, right? To get to a dollar. And, um, you know, how many coins do you know that are 200, 300xing in, a, in the course of a couple of months? No Limit Coin is the fastest growing coin, period, in the last two months. There is not another coin that grew that went four or 500x. There isn't. If there is, post it in the comments. Um, you could say Neo, uh, fucking no, let me coin bitch slap Neo. Are you kidding me? We went 30x from from our, our modest goal. We're 30x up from our modest goal of a penny. You know, everyone's shitting breaks when uh, DNT OX goes 15, 15x at the ICO. It's like, dude, we're fucking chilling at 30x's like it's no problem. You know, we just we're just stunting on people, and we're not even an ICO. Holler at, holler at, we got a platform. We're already proven. No let me coin is not even an ICO, and we're fucking putting up ICO numbers. Um, keep doubting, keep hating, right? We're just getting paid, and um, I'm gonna be ha I'm gonna be glad I held on to all my coins when this thing's five dollars, and I'm getting four percent interest compounding <laughs> um, daily, just chilling. You know, each time that little stake hits up, it's gonna be five dollars per coin, just killing it. Um, and that's another another thing about No Limit Coin I really love is the fact that um, it's so easy for the passive income, like. I mean, holler at my bit, holler at a PPT, holler at Vertasium. I know these are all passive income coins, but you know, they're my bit out of all of those is going to be the easiest to use when it comes down to it. But um, basically, there's nothing easier than just leaving your computer on. Just you know, just have like a nice little computer that's energy efficient, and just leave it on, and you just stake. It's just, there's no other coin that's really that easy that's going to be this profitable. That's going to be this lucrative. If you told me, man, Dan, you know what? You can stake Poker Stars dollars if you just keep your computer on. You'll get free Poker Stars dollars. Do you know I would fucking have my computer on all day, every day for the rest of my life because Poker Stars dollars are as good as money? Poker Stars dollars is as good as money. And if Poker Stars ever wisened up and came with the fucking crypto, they would kill it. But, you know, it's just like with FanDuel and DraftKings. They, they don't want to mess with that because guess what? The fiat world is making them billions. They're making billions, right? And crypto is a risk. It is a risk. 
to some of these people. To us, we know it's not a risk, but to them, it's a risk. And even if it was a risk to us, it's, it's something we have. We don't have a choice. In my eyes, I don't have a choice. It's not a risk. It's, I don't have a choice. It's kind of like the boat is burning and it's about to sink. Yeah, it's kind of risky to jump off of a high boat. You might belly flop and hurt yourself or hit a rock, right? But you don't have a fucking choice. The boat's going down. It's going to burn. You're going to die if you stay on the boat. So you're jumping. It's not a risk. Yeah, I don't look at that as a risk. I just look at it as something we have to do. And the fact that all of these billionaires and these big corporations, basically, why would they take the risk? Like, it took, dude, you have no idea how scared DraftKings is and FanDuel are of getting kicked out of the United States. You think they're safe in the USA? Look at what happened to poker stars overnight, mind you. Overnight, mind you. You go to log in your poker stars account, you go look at full tilt account, you go look at, um, fuck, God, what was the other one? Um, uh, there's another one that got shut down and never got returned. I forgot the, it's been a while. Um, a b ah, fuck. somebody will probably know but um anyway ultimate bet and um basically they were gone overnight and that could easily happen to anybody and, and poker was a game of skill and then they just said oh nope we're gonna lump it into um they actually it was like an anti-terrorist bill the way they did it was fucking crooked as hell they did not like they passed it on the back of a, a doc bill that had to do with like terrorism and stuff so like they just kind of swooped it through it was illegal george bush did some fucking illegal shiesty shit and really screwed over a lot of americans and what he did was a lot of the smartest brightest minds right because poker players are very smart players right it's, you got to be pretty smart to play poker for a living against online players where you're crunching numbers and running pio solver sims and you're constantly um running game theory and just always looking over your hand history, trying to get better, trying to get better. You know, those are some of the smartest players making millions of dollars a year, entrepreneurs, right? And they left the United States on that day because they were like, fuck you, we can play it in Mexico, we can play in Canada, we can play in Thailand, we can play it anywhere. And that's what happened. And uh, a lot of the smartest, brightest minds, um, hundreds of thousands of them, mind you, not just, not a small number, hundreds of thousands moved, right? Because this was a, a, a very big game, a very big career. And um, they may not have moved all at once, but over the span of how long it's been out, yeah, you have uh, new kids turning 19, 20 years old every day that want to become poker stars. And uh, my friend, uh, you know, I have a really good friend who's a poker coach, you know, he's made over $5 million, um, you know, Beef is Academy, holler at him um, if you if you want to get some really good poker coaching. But um, yeah, he has new kids coming in all the time. So a lot of the new kids, and that's what's going to happen with crypto. Like, that's what America's doing in these countries, what they're doing. Like, if they were to try to put, like, these ridiculous laws on crypto, dude, everyone would just leave. We have the money. Like, everyone would just leave. Why would why would anyone stay in the United States? I'm already out of the United States. I'm already a dual, triple citizen, right? I've, I've already protected my ass. So, um, you know, it's not hard. I'm half Italian. It wasn't hard for me to go get an Italian uh, pass, uh, passport and um, my birth certificate and all that good stuff. So, it's like, it's not... It's not really that difficult. And right now, if they if they keep pushing, I can really foresee even, you know, just squeezing out all the smart young entrepreneurs out of America and, and making them go elsewhere. Um, it's just, you know, it's like at this point, we're the biggest. And um, meaning like we're the most, we have, the, the government has to join us. It's not, it's not like we have options. Right. We can leave America. It's not like, you know, they can't force us to stay here unless they turned it into some kind of crazy, um, you know, some kind of crazy communist thing. But basically, it's like, you know, we're not North Korea, so we can leave whenever the fuck we want. And yeah, I mean, if you keep on fucking with us and messing with our money, peace out. Um, my bit right now, what's going on? It's funny because my bit shot up over $13. People take a profit. So what happened is you have the bounties, right? You have people who are just taking bounties left and right. And they were just dumping and dumping and dumping, hurting the price. Um, finally gone Cryptopia. But see, the thing about my bit is after all of those bounty getters dump, because that's pretty normal. Um, they could have probably put a lock. On the bounties but they didn't because um, there was a lot of smaller bounties so it didn't really make sense to lock up but that's what people do people don't give a shit like people think of it as free money they're just like oh well I got this bounty for free and I have to pay for it I'm just gonna go get Bitcoin and then cash it out and um, go buy something and that's the mentality people and the funny thing is no matter how much money you have you're going to invest it all at one point or you're going to have some leftover fiat that you're always going to wonder what you should invest it in. The, the point I'm trying to say is people always think that they have to be making moves. They think that they have to be making moves. What if 
So what if somebody gave you 100 Bitcoin and they said, and Bitcoin, I'm from the future, 100% they convinced you. And in the future, those Bitcoins were going to be worth $1 million each. So you'd have $100 million in five years. All you had to do is wait and not touch them. I guarantee you, you'd be surprised. You wouldn't think it, but I bet you more people than not would still try to fuck around and make more money during that time. They just couldn't wait the five years. They just couldn't. Even knowing they got the game won, they're too fidgety. They couldn't because they're going to be like, well, I could make more than $100 million if I make this move. It's just human nature. It's just how it is. I've seen it too many times. And that's kind of like where we are. You know, I'm kind of like Dan, you know, from the future. And it's like, I'm coming back. I'm saying, man, this cryptocurrency is going to be a $1 trillion market cap. Everything's going to be super big. If you just kind of chill and wait, um, you're going to be good. You're going to be good. But people can't, you know, like they just can't. You know, it's like right after an ICO, I'm telling people no limit coins going to go to a dollar and it just keeps going up and up and up. And now it's at 30 cents. It's almost halfway there. No one could ever have foreseen this. And you still have people who try to day trade it, try to um, sell it. And I don't know. And they quote unquote take profit. I just don't get it because it's not taking profit. I don't believe that's the weird thing about it. Like, what does that even mean? Taking profit? What do you mean? How are you taking profit? If no, all right, let's say you bought no limit coin at 500 Satoshi and you took quote unquote profit let's all right you took quote unquote profit at you know you had 500 satoshi where was that wow wow we've, we're so far all right you know you bought it around here all right let's be let's let's a little bit make it a little more realistic you bought it at 2000 satoshi you know bought it around 2000 satoshi right around here and then you're like oh bro i took profit at 4000 i doubled my money you took profit, you and your homie high five, right? And everything's cool. You're the coolest guy in the world. But the only problem is it's now even, it rose all the way up to here. But even if you did did hold, you're already over three times your money. You know, so did you really take profit or did you miss out on profit? That's what I don't get. I don't understand the term. I don't understand the term taking profit because this is crypto. How are you taking profit when it's rapidly rising and you're just getting another crypto, which is Bitcoin, so you're, I don't get, I don't know the people, I don't get the mindset. It's just these poor ass fucking mindsets. People, um, I don't know. They think of, it's like, okay, the circle's this big, um, and their circumference. And this is what they look at instead of like the whole picture. So I'm not crackhead. Like, yeah, it's easy for me to say, but it's not because I was fucking in you guys shoes. You know, you can't say I came in this thing with a fucking golden spoon. Go look at my beginning videos. I set lures, I did things like that, but um, I fucking had my 60-70% nest egg no matter what. So, well, I don't know if you're trying to take quote-unquote profit. It's like, yeah, the reason I do that is to protect myself from losing out on profit. So, I always, you know, I'm happy if it goes up and I'm happy if it goes down. Because if it goes down, I can buy more. If it goes up, then I'm good because I have a 60% nest egg. Uh, but these people who are just talking, like, people always say, when should I take profit? And I just look at them and it's like, man, you might as well come up to me and say, Dan, I'm broke. I'm broke and high five me. And it's like, all right, bro. Like, I don't know where you, you should rephrase the question. And, and you should say, um, at this point, do you think Bitcoin or Ethereum is going to go higher in the next year than no limit coin or whatever coin you're trying to trade? That's the question you should be asking because there is no taking profits. We don't know that's, you can't, that's ignorant to say, how do you, how do you know it's profit? I mean, like I said, if you sold no limit coin at 2000 and it goes up to 6000 how is that taking profit? That doesn't make fucking sense. So um, I just, I hear that word so much and it's like nails on a chalkboard every time I hear it because it just makes, and then you try to explain it to people and like, I don't understand. It's like, uh, it's annoying when people come at and um, they, I don't know, man, it's just, it's tough to explain. It's just like the mentality is so ruggedly wrong. And um, that's why people are counting pennies. I don't know. Like, um, it's much better. Like, you don't, it's so, so hard to day trade these cryptos. I'm not a day trader. I never day trade. I set lures. I spearfish and I set lures. That's what I do. I don't day trade. Um, meaning I'm not like trying to make a super profit right then. You know, yeah, I'll play around with 20, 30%. Um, but other than that. And another thing I have been noticing, very few coins, holler at no limit coin. I fucking just knew it. I just knew it when I saw this coin for the first time. Most coins have not caught back up the BTC. What? Most coins have not caught back up the BTC. 
meaning what you thought back in the day where all coins were going to raise faster than BTC, they haven't. And the ones that have DNG, o, um, DNT, o, OX, and Latin, they haven't. You can't say they did. They were catching up. They were filling out. That's what you get in ICO. An ICO can't charge you market price. They can't. They have to give you a discount. And then if it's a good idea and it's a good product, and once it hits the, the market, a lot of people can't invest, like USA and um, you know UK a lot of the times too, and Hong Kong. Um, then they're going to buy it up all in the exchanges. Look at what happened to EOS. You know, it went for 83 cents in the ICO and then $5 a couple of days later. That's because, um, A, a lot of people don't know. All right, so if you think 1% of people know about crypto, how many people know about ICOs? Uh, maybe a tenth of that. How many people of that know of what ICOs are actually know how to invest? Okay, very, very, very small fraction. Of the people who know how what an ICO is and know how to invest, how many of them can actually do it? How many of them are U.S. citizens? I mean, that's you, you're, you're really making it such a small niche for people who... And then of all the people who know about the ICOs and know how to invest, and they even can invest because they're outside the United States, they don't because they think they're too risky. There's people who just don't invest in ICOs, period, point blank, period. They don't give a shit. They don't invest in ICOs. So you're talking about slicing and slicing and slicing. The percentage of people who actually get in ICOs and know about them and um, actually hear of them because a lot of ICOs go under the radar. It's just so few. I had to hire, you know, I have a basically, we didn't hire, we have a research team and we're putting together an elite group of researchers who will get paid down the road. Right now we're doing tryouts and, um, you know, I'm just keeping an eye on. People may not think I'd be lurking in there, but I'd be lurking in there. I'd be seeing everything. I'd be taking notes seeing who's doing what and um this is going to be a real deal because basically what i'm saying for the future um oh yeah holler at crypto daily for making that thumbnail fucking the dude's a beast much respect um one of the very few youtubers i watch all the time the dude's just entertaining but he's real and he gives solid information um dudes gets my grade my, my stamp of approval he doesn't fucking need my approval he's probably like fuck you dan i don't need your goddamn approval but he's a fucking beast and uh, he's getting it anyway so um, holler crypto daily and what i was getting at basically was <clears throat> of course I, I, I why did i just cut myself off and then i uh i forgot what i was saying well i can touch back on the filling out part anyway so a lot of the altcoins have not even caught up to bitcoin which is very 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 important to understand because very few of them have surpassed them no limit coin has up and beyond um destroyed absolutely everything neo is up there because neo has been around like you can't you can't say an ico um i was talking about how few people know of icos so it's just like it's very 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 um lucrative to get into these icos because that's why they people always say man why does it go 15x after the ico why don't people just buy in the ico for the reasons i just mentioned and um yeah i have the research team that we're building and basically I'm snowplow. I'm, I'm like snowballing my way into something really big because what's going to happen? Left and right, Microsoft, these big corporations are buying out the ICOs. You're starting to see new ICOs all the time, but you don't get to invest in them. The newer ICOs, you're going to have to be an accredited, uh, uh, accredited investor. I already had to go through all the bullshit. I already know. Um, the ICO regulations. So it's basically in the very near future, I would say three or four months from now, every pretty much every ICO worth a damn, you're going to have to be an accredited investor. And that's if it slipped through the cracks of Microsoft and Google. Because you got to think, man, these are the guys who are just printing money, man. Like, yeah, they're not the Federal Reserve, but Google, come on, man. Are you kidding me? They're fucking, they're, they're so rich, the game's over for them. They're on top of the game. I know that. I know what it's like because it's like when you have, I mean, I don't know what it's like that fucking Google money, not, not even at all. But like, I know what it's like to be a big fish in a small pond and they're like a whale in the pond. Like there's not even enough water for them. It's just stupid how much money they have. And they're just scooping up all the technology left and right. What I want to do is create the first basically stamp of approval business. So it's like, if you don't have fucking Dan or um, the, you know, the team, you know, basically, you know, I just call it Dan's team for now, but I'll come up with a super cool name. Basically, if you don't got me on your side and you're getting bought out, then nobody's going to fuck with you. That's the funny thing, man. Google can have all the money in the world. There can be all the dollar bills in the world. But if we don't fuck with you, you're worthless. If no one uses Google, you're fucking worthless. If no one uses Facebook, you're fucking worthless, right? You're worthless. 
You only got power because we use you. You let actually they use us if you want to be more accurate. So we're only giving them the power. So I'm going to say basically I want to become so big. I want to have my research team. I want to fucking go and hunt the ICOs and become a part of them. But look, these are decentralized. Dan's decentralized. That's he he is. And if he's on your team, you know he's decentralized. And uh, I'm just slowly building this reputation where people can trust in me. And it's like, you know, sometimes you just got to trust in somebody without trust. Right. We're just we're done. And um, we're so on a steadily slope to become centralized. It's so it's so crazy. It's very, very. I mean, if all the cool blockchain technology is bought up by all these big corporations, it's going to be very, very hard to compete. You already have these assholes trying to um, patent everything. It's really go look at what Goldman Sachs and all these people are trying to patent. They're trying to patent very broad strokes of the blockchain technology. It's like trying to patent a fucking zipper for a coat or a pocket for a coat. It's just very annoying. I really hate the patent system because it's made for the rich. It's first of all, it's very hard. No one, if you have a good idea, you can't patent it. You know, you don't have enough money. It's very simple. They want the rich people to buy up all the patents and make it illegal for the poor people to use. So the rich people always stay on top. It's such a power grab, but it's all a game. Who's making these fucking rules? Who's the guy that said that? Who's the guy who said, okay, patents cost a billion dollars and only the richest can do it. And if you patent this, no one else can use it by law. It's like, go oh, fuck your law, bro. Like, that doesn't even make sense. It's like, uh, who are you? Like, you think I'm scared to be locked up in a cage? Like, go fuck yourself. That's stupid. I fucking hate that mentality. It's going to get my blood boiling every time I think about that shit. Because they're basically just saying, like, screw you. We're going to do what we want. And you can sit there and take it because you're too scared to die. And, you know, we're, we're fucking gangsters. That's basically what it is. And, um, trust me, life is much worse being controlled by them. Um, I mean, we're not far removed from some crazy shit. You know, go back 100 years and look at the world. You know, tell me if you want that to return because we're not far removed. And if you think we're smarter than we were, you're fucking ass backwards. We're not smarter than we were. We're fucking a lot, a lot less intelligent than we were 100 years ago. We just have a lot of smart technology, smartphones, but dumb brains. Um, PPT is getting kicked in the dick. A lot of coins. Um, Vertasium is just out of there. Just absolutely out of there. Not hanging at all. Um. I mean, you know, it's like, dude, you're not competing. You still got this fucking bunk ass fucking website. The shit's not even fucking secure. You know, I mean, hey, man, I'm just going to fucking put them on blast. Like, you know, Vertasium, holler at me. Like, I'd come fix up all this shit. Look what I did with No Limit Coin. Look at what I did with We. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to take all the credit. I'm just saying, like, look at what the team did for No Limit Coin. Like, pick up your fucking game, bro. Like, this isn't good enough. I'm sorry. This shit needs to be sleek. This shit needs to be better. Um, and it's it's reflected in the price. Right? I don't have to tell you anything. You're waking up and seeing what the fuck's going on. Um, I mean, the, the, the sad part is I know the idea, man. I know the idea is going to work. He just has to implement it. And it just seems like he's trying to do too much himself. Um, it's, I mean, you know, I, I'm one of the few people who don't think this is um, going to fail. I mean, hey, I, I'm also, you know... You know, I'm dying with the crew, too, so um, I'm not, I don't get weak-legged at all. Like, I look at this, I don't even fucking flinch. I'm just debating if I should buy more or not. The only reason I don't buy more is the fact that um, I, I need more confidence, man. I mean, I need more confidence. Like, I'm not going to sell it, obviously. Um, I mean, I sold a little bit for a profit back there, but, you know, I got it. I got it. I mean, it's not, really, it's not even enough for me to fucking be talking about it right now i just noticed it's getting kicked in the dick but it's like such a small part of my portfolio that's like not even worth me even bringing up but um definitely just also buying a little bit of neo um when i already have a large holding in neo but i wanted to buy some more just because there's about to be some new icos launched on it a bunch of cool shit going on um you know you just want to be having quality coins in your thing you know my quality coins bitcoin ethereum neo i have omg i have omg i also have ong um people are sleeping on ong another thing is i, I was watching you know because i watch a lot of youtubers um to get like i like to watch youtubers because it helps me find out if the coin i want to look at is legit enough so if i'm looking at an ico while i have the research crew going over it and all that i'm still doing my research and i'm looking at what other people think 
it's very important, man, to know what other, like, the uh, mindset, the collective mindset of what's going on. So I like to look at some of these YouTubers who go and they dissect the ICOs right on the YouTube channel. And it's fucking awesome. It's cool. Like, you know, and uh, I learned from their mindset. You know, it's kind of like I'll get a little Mega Man power because these dudes are making money and um, they all, they all, everyone has their own way. You're going to pick up something like natural something. You know, some people are going to say, oh, this is art. Um, it's kind of cool to look at it from their mindset. And it's also cool because I'm looking at it from their mindset, but, but from my frame. So it's like I push my frame into their, into their philosophy, into their perception. And it's kind of like a, their mold. Their, it's like, it's kind of like putty. And I have like one of those cookie cutter looking things. And I just push, right? And then whatever fits into my frame, I take away and then I carry it with me with the rest of my life. But I'm not messing with my frame. But, you know, I'll learn a way to look at things. And um, I'll also see some of the, the flaws, I believe, the mindsets, because some people are so, all right, so some people, uh, they really like to look at teams, and they're like, all right, bet, they'll go and they'll look at the teams, they'll see if they've done anything in their past, and of course, you know, that's fucking one of the first things you do, however, um, um, a lot of people are too heavily dependent on that, meaning like, they don't even get on the phone, with the, the CEO, they don't get the feel like they'll look at him and they'll be like, man, this guy was owns a construction business and he was a CEO of a phone company, but you know, he has nothing to do with blockchain. So I'm just going to pass. And that that's leaving a lot of money on the table. One of my biggest fucking hitters, man. One of my biggest fucking hitters, man. No limit coin talking thousand percent, 2000 percent gains um, in a couple of months. Um, 2000, 2000 X, like thousand X, like, um, I don't even know. It's like five, something stupid. I'm a pile. I'm the money on the power guy, man. You look at some of these YouTubers. I respect them. They got everything, you know, everything, everything nice and neat. I believe that's bad. Cause you know why you're, you're counting your chips too much when you're too organized and people are going to look at me like I've had, I've talked to millionaires. I talked to hedge fund managers. I talked to important people. They look at me like I'm crazy when I talk about, about spear fishing. I don't fucking blink. I look them right in their motherfucking eyes and I'll define spear fishing. And they'll look at me like I'm crazy. And I'll look at them like it's standard as hell. And then they're like, Oh, well, this guy's so fucking confident. Um, you know, it's like, ah, uh, when I tell them, they're like, okay, so where are your books? And I just laugh at them. I'm like, books. It's like, bitch, I got a pile. I just throw it on the pile. Like, why do I care? I don't need to know how much money I have. I got enough. <laughs> I got enough. And whenever I need some, I just look at this is what I picture when I need more money. I close my eyes. I put my hand into the giant money pile. I grab as much as I can out. And then I go about my day because that's what I need for the day. I don't need to know how much money I have. I got a pile of it. And I just keep throwing on, throwing on a pile. Did Scrooge McDuck know how many golden coins he had in his vault? Or did the motherfucker dive in head first and go swimming? every day it seemed like he kept getting more gold coins as the show continued so that's kind of my mindset i just got a pile i don't got time to be my accountant and i don't trust anybody to be all up in my business i don't need anybody to be up in my business so i'm i'm, I'm very unorthodox you are not going to hear of my style um probably people are going to start copying when i'm a billionaire but whatever like um you know i'm too fast it's like, you know, if I'm a boat or not boat, if I'm a, if I'm a plane, I'm throwing off everything off board. I'm throwing out all the seats. I'm throwing off everything I needed because I want to go as fast as possible. And me having to count how much money I have and saying, okay, I'm investing in this and this is my returns. It's like, nah, man, I don't even know how much money I've made. Straight up. I made enough. That's the only answer. That, I only need to answer one question. Was it enough? Yeah. For where I am now, I mean, it's not enough for my goal, my ultimate goal, but so, but the, getting back to the point, it's like, man, Raphael was making poker machines. He got a patent on it. And then, um, you know, he ran self, uh, he, he owned a bunch of pay phones. He's done a bunch of off view tasks. But when I talked to him on the phone, I got the idea. I knew I can trust him. And that's the thing, man, because I value myself so highly. It's like, man, you give me a trustworthy um, coin with, with, with devs that will work. Devs that roll up their sleeves and work right? You give me a blockchain guy, some kind of tech guy, a programmer. I'm not a fucking programmer. You build it. I'll bring them. And you give me trust in somebody that can build something. I don't give a fuck. I hold my, I am the one I'll be on the team and make it work. Like I don't need to look for another person who's going to be some kind of all-star person. Like that's not me. I don't, I don't care. It's like, I'll insert myself into the situation and make the value rise itself. So I'm not looking like you're going to leave a lot on the table. If you're, if you're only looking for the elite teams out there and you're not like willing to get on the phone, get on Skype, talk to them, get a feel. Um, you know, first of all, do you like them? Cause I don't know, like 
I'll look at a superstar team. I'll get on the call with them. I'm like, dude, I don't like this guy. Like, I like the product. I think the product could work. I just don't like the dude. I can't get along with this guy because I don't think I can get through to him. There's some people who don't want to hear it. They think that they're all right. I can't fuck with someone who knows they're right. I know I'm wrong. That's the thing about me. I know I'm wrong. I'm 100% wrong 100% of the time. I don't need to be right. I'm 100% wrong, right? So that what that means is that means I'm an open canvas to improvement. Because I know everything about me is broken, a.k.a. it can be improved. Everything about me can be improved. There, I am not at the peak at anything. And that just means me an open book to be improved all the time because I know I'm broken. I know I'm fucking can be improved all the time. And, you know, if it's not broken but it can be improved, it's as good as broken in my eyes. So I live in that kind of mind state where I'm constantly improving. I'm far from fucking right. So I can't deal with people... And a lot of coins, a lot of CEOs, man, that's the that's the downfall. Too much pride. They know what's best. They're not trying to listen to the community. Go try to talk to DraftKings, man, a CEO. Like, you can't. Like, these people, they, they make so much money, and then they forget about it. They forget about everyone else. It's really that simple. Um, they're like, man, we've already made it. We don't need to listen to these people. And that's the thing. People be like, oh, well, I'm a, I'm an owner. I'm the CEO of a big billion dollar company. I don't have time to talk to people. It's like, dude, but the people are the ones that made you a billion dollars. It's like, do you not remember when you were in your garage? Do you not remember when you had to roll up your sleeves and had to email people and had to sign up people? Like you didn't start off fresh. You didn't start off balling. You started off needing these people. And now these people got you where you are. You can't even talk to them. I guarantee you when we're a billion dollar company, no limit coin, you're going to be able to talk to me, Raphael. You're going to be able to talk to Raphael. I fucking guarantee it. I'm a man of my word. That'll come back and bite me in my motherfucking ass when we become a billionaires and we go incognito because it's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. So that's just the thing. It's all an illusion in the mind. They think they don't have enough time. No, that's a choice. They choose, right? If you're that rich, you can buy your time. Uh, I hate the people who say, I don't have time for anything. Like, I don't have time for family. I don't have time for my kids. I don't have time for my wife. It's like, fuck that. You're choosing not to have life. You know, you're going the easy route. I work less than I ever have, and I make more than I ever had. That means I spend more time with my girlfriend. I spend more time with my family. I spend more time worrying about... Um, improving my family and my relationships and my friends than I ever have because working hard is an illusion. You got to work hard when you work. A lot of people don't. A lot of people chalk up hours. A lot of people are like, oh, well, I worked 10 hours today. But how much of those hours did you really work? Like, I'll work two hours. I'll be fucking honest. I'm like, man, I worked three hours yesterday. But those three hours, I motherfucking worked. I worked real hard. I got done three hours when most people get done three months. And that's the difference. And then I refresh. I relax. I meditate. I get back into myself. I, re I, I recharge my energy. I remember um, earlier this week, man, my stomach started to feel a lot better. What it was, was I was just working too hard without a break. I, I was working four or five hour days. And when I say I'm working four or five, 10 hour days, that's a 10 hour day. Like I'm a zombie at the end of that bitch. Like I fucking get, I put it all on the line. Fourth quarter, I, I, I'm throwing up on the sideline, wiping my mouth, going right back in. No squirt of water. Just fucking gruelly, um, sandy mouth. But, um. It's like right now, three months from now, I, people, three months from now, this isn't going to be here, guys. ICOs, as you know, aren't going to be here. Um, a lot of these centralized coins aren't going to be here. It's rapidly picking up. We're going to see this thing hop very quickly. 200 billion, 200, uh, it's just going to happen in the blink of an eye. You are not going to believe how this thing is going to make everyone's head spin. It's about to happen. You have the, the perfect storm of an economic collapse with crypto being like this safe haven. Um, Floyd Mayweather is calling himself Floyd Crypto Mayweather. You already know he's going to be talking about that. The most viewed fight in the world. It's going to break all the records. And all, you already know he's, all he's going to do is promote these ICOs. Although he's the shittiest ICO promoter I've ever heard because he's basically saying, um, I can't invest in Stokes, but I'm going to make a lot of money anyway. So he's basically saying, I'm just getting paid to do this. So it's not, you know, what about the investors? Like, are we going to get paid or are you just going to walk away with the money? So, um, not really a fan of how he's doing it, but it's still good for crypto because more and more people are talking about it. And that's what needs to happen. Segwit was introduced today. Um, still, you know, Bitcoin is, um, it was still running slow the other day. The the, the block increase is still going to be later on. Um, there's still the fear-ish of a Bitcoin or two. But you know what? I'm not really even worried. I'm not. I mean, you know, it's just 71 bill. You got 10 bill for Bitcoin Cash. It's just a shame that Bitcoin Cash has to be there. It just really is. This would be so much cleaner if Ripple took its rightful spot as third, like it always has been. And Bitcoin Cash wasn't here. I don't give a fuck. I wish Bitcoin Cash didn't exist. I really do. 
but you know you can't wish things away um you know what they say you hold your hand out put your wishes and hopes in one hand and take a shit in the other and see which one fills up faster and uh, i think you'll know the question the answer to that um i'm going to go ahead and kill it here cheers peace